imagine life without your best friend? Who would you hang out with and talk to about your problems? Life would be so lonely. You rely on your friends for companionship, fun, and support. Animals rely on each other, too. Some have lifelong relationships with other organisms, called symbiotic relationships. There are three different types of symbiotic relationships, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Now, we will learn more about the all types of symbiotic relationship, with the help of examples. Mutualism. Mutualism is a type of relationships between organisms of two different species in which each one benefits. For example, Egyptian plover and the crocodile. An example of mutualism is the relationships between the Egyptian plover and the crocodile. In the tropical regions of Africa, the crocodile lies with its mouth open. The plover flies into its mouth and feeds on bits of the king meat stuck in the crocodile's teeth. The crocodile does not eat the plover. Instead, he appreciates the dental work. The plover eats a meal and the crocodile gets his teeth cleaned. Coincidentally, the Egyptian plover is also known as the crocodile bird. Ants and aphids. A clear example of mutualism is the relationship established by some types of ants with aphids. The latter secrete a dense liquid that is very rich in carbohydrates called honeydew. Ants feed on it, so they literally herd the aphid colonies to protect them from potential predators. By doing so, they allow aphids to procreate in a safer environment. Termites, protozoan bacteria. Termites feed on wood and other organic substances, but their bodies cannot digest them. To do so, they need the help of another species, protozoan. These unicellular organisms live in the stomach of termites and are in charge of digesting wood cellulose, which they feed on. Protozoan also have bacteria that transform the remaining cellulose into nitrogen which is then absorbed by the termites. Additionally, the termite offspring consume the feces of adult termites to gain the protozoan bacteria they need. Three parties are involved in this relationship, and none of them would survive without the rest. Sloths, algae and moths. Sloths are extremely slow animals. They're most vulnerable when they descend to the ground to defecate only once per week. Why do they put themselves at such high risk? A type of moth that inhabits their fur takes advantage of the descent to the ground to lay its eggs in the sloth's droppings. After they hatch, the new moths fly up to the crowns of the trees and settle in the fur of sloths. They then produce a natural fertilizer that boosts nitrogen levels, allowing algae and fungi to grow on the fur. Sloths have a number of cracks in their fur. Water accumulates in them, allowing the algae to grow. Sloths feed on these organisms to supplement their low-energy diet. Commensalism. Commensalism is a type of relationship in which only one species benefits while the other is neither helped nor harmed. For example, Remora fish. Remora fish are very bony and have a dorsal fin, the fin on the back of fish. That acts like a suction cup. Remora fish use this fin to attach themselves to whales, sharks, or rays and eat the scraps their hosts leave behind. The remora fish gets a meal, while its host gets nothing. Selfish, sure, but neither gets hurt. Spiny-tailed lizards and their fat-tailed scorpion. Desert lizards are extremely territorial when it comes to their dens. These are cool. Shady places that are often raided by foxes and other predators. Fat-tailed scorpions like to be in the shade and offer the lizards protection from predators in exchange for living with them in their dens. This is another clear example of mutualism, from which both species have obtained an advantage that's key for their survival. Goby fish and blind shrimp. Goby fish have excellent vision, while blind shrimp as their name implies, can barely see. Shrimp keep their dens clean and in perfect condition, and they share them with goby fish for protection. In exchange, the goby fish will stay by the shrimp at all time, and will give a slight tail flick as a sign for them to hide when it sees a potential threat. Narrowmouth toads and tarantulas. Tarantulas usually hunt small toads, 
but they make an exception for narrow-mouthed toads. These small amphibians keep tarantula eggs pest and insect free, in exchange for their protection and for shelter. Scops owls usually hunt narrow-mouthed toads, but they'll think twice if there's a tarantula guarding their prey. Parasitism Parasitism is a type of relationship in which only one organism, the parasite, gains, while the other, the host, suffers. For example, deer and ticks. The deer tick is a parasite. It attaches to a warm-blooded animal and feeds on its blood. Ticks need blood at every stage of their life cycle. They also carry Lyme disease, an illness that can cause joint damage, heart complications and kidney problems. The tick benefits from eating the animal's blood. Unfortunately, the animal suffers from the loss of blood and nutrients and may get sick. Snails and Green Banded Brood Sacs Green Banded Brood Sacs is one of the most shocking examples of parasitism in the animal kingdom. This parasite invades the body of the snail and grows until it adopts a tubular or worm-like shape inside the animal's antenna. The thick antenna develop an eye-catching color and make a pulsating movement to attract birds. The parasite also invades the snail's brain, forcing it to wander around the leaves like a zombie in plain sight without the ability to hide. When a bird eats one of these antenna, the parasite lays its eggs in the bird's digestive system. The eggs will then infect other snails, as they feed, amongst other things, on bird feces. If a snail is lucky enough to survive, it'll grow a new infected antenna. Caterpillars and Glyptopindles wasps. The relationships between parasitic species can be extremely cruel. As the case of the Glyptopindles wasp shows, this wasp introduces its eggs in the body of a butterfly caterpillar. When they hatch, the larvae feed on the caterpillar's fluids, without killing it, until they reach a considerable size. Then, they exit its body by making a hole through its skin. Once outside, they form a cocoon to undergo metamorphosis, but the nightmare doesn't end there. The wasp previously introduced part of its DNA in the caterpillar, forcing it to follow its commands. The caterpillar will remain by the larvae until they complete their metamorphosis, even using its silk to protect them. Once the process is complete, the caterpillar dies of dehydration and starvation. There are many other examples of symbiosis in the animal kingdom, such as clownfish and daemons, buffaloes and expeckers, moray eels and shrimp, hippos and black shark minnows, scops owls and blind snakes, flukes and certain types of fish, etc. These are some of the best known examples and they help us to understand how species can adapt in order to survive even if that means turning to beings that are completely different to them. That's all about the symbiotic relationship and its types. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel for more upcoming updates.